sector one, the first stop you should make for your motorsport fix. Now today I am back to review round seven and eight of the Formula E World Championship and this time round it was held in Berlin in Germany. So jumping straight in to qualifying which was a bit of a weird one for round seven as when we got to the semi-finals we had Alexander Sims and Jean-Éric Verne going head to head. And something that we haven't seen happen for quite a while, because it's very rare with these cars, they had the exact same qualifying time. Now, the rule is that the driver who set it first, in this case, Alexander Sims, he was allowed to progress to the final duel against Eduardo Mortara. But we want to know what you guys think about this rule, because it's not really fair as, you know, Sims went out first and it's not a head to head as such. It's sort of one after another. So let us know what you guys think about that. But even though Sims did make it to the final duel, it was Mortara who managed to take his first ever pole in Formula E. And you know, he's been waiting quite a while for this one. So I think he was pretty happy to say the least. And the fan boost drivers for round seven were De Costa, Verne, Van Dorn, Evans and De Vries. This week, no Giovinazzi, which was a bit of a surprise, but obviously he's not doing as well. So I think a lot of fans are maybe voting for the drivers at the front. Not too sure about that, but obviously, you know, they're the ones who use fan boost the most and it can obviously impact the race the most. The start of the first Berlin Epri of the weekend, Mortara managed to keep the lead bit of a you know easy not sort of dramatic um opening lap we had to cough to try and make a move on sims into turn one um but everyone was a bit cautious obviously you know don't want to be out lap one just you know get through it and everybody seemed to do so something unusual about this race as well was that stoffel van dorn actually qualified p8 and he dropped down to p12 in the opening laps now we're not used to seeing him that low down in qualification especially in the mercedes we also had his fellow championship contender, Jean-Éric Verne, who did manage to start P4, but he dropped back to P6 in the early stages as well. Both of them made incredible recovery drives, um, Van Dorn ending up coming third and Verne came second. And here are some of the moves they made, you know, they're really making those cars work and their teammates don't seem to be able to do the same. And as I mentioned before, fan boost was a very critical factor as Verne did manage to overtake Van Dorn in the closing stages of the race using his fan boost. Um, and that was one of the late moves we had in the race. But obviously throughout it, we had a lot of strategy and a lot of attack mode strategy. I think I've mentioned this the last two rounds of Formula E that attack mode is becoming this massive thing where their strategy is based a lot around it and having those gaps to slot in and out. Now, this time around, we had Verline, who was up in the top five, and he was one of the first drivers to take his attack mode. And Mortara was actually one of the last people, even though he was, you know, out there, he had a comfortable lead, leading the race, and he did take it. When he did so, quite late, he actually fell behind Lotterer, but obviously managed to get straight back past him. And, you know, he had a relatively quiet race. He was able to pull away. He had great attack mode strategy. And it's actually something he did in round eight as well, which was take attack mode late. So Mortara basically clean race, few overtakes when he had to take attack mode. But apart from that, solid drive, pole position and, you know, basically led every lap apart from, apart from maybe a couple of corners. So Venturi had, you know, a great race. However, somebody who had a great qualifying, Alexander Sims, he started P2, but he did end up finishing the race in P9. Now, that Mahindra doesn't seem to look like it has a lot of pace, which is quite a shame because, you know, we're used to seeing him up there as well as his teammate Oliver Rowland. So hopefully they can get that sorted soon. So we had the top three of Mortara, Verne and Van Dorn across the line at the end of the race to make up the podium places. And something a little bit odd about this Formula E race, I thought at least, was that we had no safety cars or, you know, full course yellow at all. There was no incidents. And, you know, I'm not sure what this is down to. I think it might be, obviously, during when COVID was a big thing, we had many rounds here that basically the whole championship was decided in Berlin when De Costa won it two seasons ago. So maybe it's because these drivers know this track so well, they're, you know, less likely to crash, or maybe it's one of those circuits even though it is a street circuit, it's quite wide. So there's few incidents, but obviously didn't take away from the racing. I thought it was a great round seven. And here are the results for this round. Obviously Mortara in first and we have the top 10. We only had a couple of DNFs um, and they were mainly mechanical problems. 
So moving on to the second race of the weekend at Berlin, which was round eight. Now this time they use the reverse track layout, um, which is quite interesting. Obviously it's a good shake up um, for the second race and the drivers all have to get used to it. I always think that would be really strange to drive the track completely the opposite, but obviously none of the drivers seemed to have a problem with it, especially Mortaro who took his second pole of his career and the second in the same race weekend. Uh, honestly, on a roll, amazing quality pace. Um, then we had Robin Frines up in second, um, who lost out in the final duel, and De Vries back in P3 for Mercedes. He's had a few not great qualities, not great races, but you know, that was a great performance from him. And the fan boost drivers for round eight were De Vries, De Costa, Van Dorn, Lotra, and Verne. So the start of the race was a bit more dramatic than round seven. We had Nick de Vries storming up the inside of Mortara and Frines to take the lead down at turn one. Now, I'm not sure whether he meant to go for this move or whether it was sort of Mortara broke quite early and de Vries just had to go for the space and go for the gap. Nevertheless, great move, got him into the lead and he basically never looked back from that point. I'd say it was sort of reminiscent of you know, last year and how well he performed and how, you know, he hit the front and he never, he never looked back. And I think it was a great race from him today, you know, using attack mode well. He basically never dropped behind anybody after he took the lead. So, you know, it's nice to have him back on the top step. And his teammate Van Dorn also had an amazing race. He managed to finish P3 again after starting P8. But um, John Eric Verne, who, you know, made the good comeback again yesterday, didn't manage to this time. He seemed to be holding a lot of other cars up and we saw a massive grid spread um, during this race and he actually finished P9 which was a bit of a shame for him and his championship challenge. Also Robin Frines who started P2 made a crucial error and he missed his attack mode. Now it looks like he did manage to get it but obviously there's loads of sensors that he might not have hit so yeah he didn't manage to hit that and he ended up finishing much lower down the field than he would have liked especially with a potential podium there for him. Again, we had great attack mode strategy, a couple of the great moves we had Van Dorn moving past on Degrassi in the final laps um, for P3, we had Mortara passing for P2, um, and we also had a little bit of drama on the last lap between Da Costa and Frines for P5, um, and that was right at the end of the race, nearly had somebody in the wall, not quite. Again, we had no safety car, no full course yellow for round 8, and interestingly, no DNFs whatsoever. So I do think this track is one where the teams have so much data that, you know, the drivers are so used to the track and the, the car sort of, you know, they know the track well, I guess, that, you know, we had very, very few DNFs in the last race and none in this one. So the finishing positions, we had Nick de Vries winning the race, which is great to see him back on top. We had Eduardo Mortara finishing in P2, a great weekend for him, two poles, a first and a second, cannot get better than that. So he is clearly back in the championship running. And we also had Van Dorn in P3 to make it a double Mercedes podium. So here are the results for round eight. Um, as you can see, and as I said, no DNFs whatsoever. It was a great drive, um, especially for Oliver Rowland, who finished up quite far up since, you know, Mahindra haven't been looking great. And I said, you know, in round seven, Sims didn't have a great race. But yeah, we had a great weekend in Berlin. Not as much action, I'd say, as we sort of normally have there or normally compared to other races. Um, but yeah, I think it was great. You know, we don't have the top three finishing as the top three. Classic Formula E. So great weekend for those at the top of the championship. And speaking of the championship, here is the driver standings. Now we've got Van Dorn still at the top of them and we've got Vern and Mortara, his closest challengers. So, you know, we're halfway through the season now, round eight, midpoint of 16 rounds. These three are probably going to be our drivers who are looking to clinch that title. Obviously, we know anything can happen in Formula E. It will come down to the final round. Um, so there's lots to look forward to. And we've also got the constructor standing. So Mercedes are on top um, with their double podium finish this weekend. But obviously, we've got DS Cheetah close behind as well. So that is it, a roundup of rounds seven and eight of the Formula E Championship in Berlin. Hope you enjoyed the video and the quick overview of both races. We've got a three week gap before the championship returns. So hopefully a little summer break for the drivers and we'll be back with loads more racing and reviews. 
Um, let us know how you think the drivers have got on this season so far. You know, mid-season point, how do the teammates compare to each other? Who do you think is the team that's most improved? So let us know down in the comments and we will see you again very soon.